There are plenty of ways to describe the upcoming tie Bayern Munich vs Real Madrid, the battle royal, the eternal rivalry, the clash of the titans, the Champions League all-time classic. It's also a war of two empires, confrontation of two different approaches and philosophies, and in the end of the day, it's a tie between two main clubs in the history of the competition. Indeed, in terms of the titles won, Bayern are still behind AC Milan, 6 against 7, and even aren't clear third, been tied with Liverpool. But while the Italian and the English clubs mix the periods of enormous success with the prolonged dismal eras, the German side in the last 50 or so years was always there or thereabout. For instance, AC Milan endured a seemingly never-ending drought after its European Cup triumph in 1969, being unable to reach even the quarter-final stage of the tournament for almost 20 seasons, and then in 2012 left the summit of continental football for more than a decade. Meanwhile, it took Liverpool 15 years in order to recover from the horror of AZL in 1985. Of course, Bayern had its fluctuations of form too, but they were minimal. Since the debut in the European Cup in the distant 1969, the flagship of the German football has never been absent in this competition for more than three years. On top of that, each time the club played big. After the early elimination in 1969, at the hands or rather legs of Saint Etienne, Bayern reached at least the quarterfinal stage incredible 18 times in a row. After the revamp of Champions League, the task of being among eight elite continental clubs became much tougher, but even in this case, the Bundesliga giants failed to do so just five times. As you may see in this regard, Bayern are even ahead of Real Madrid, percentage-wise of course, so it would be fair to say that it's a contest between the most successful and the most stable. The current Carl Ancelotti side is epitome of consistency too, though. Over the course of campaign, which is gradually coming to a close, Real Madrid lost just two games both against their combative neighbors from Atletico. Having said it, one of those defeats came from an extra time match in the Spanish Cup. Otherwise, the club went basically the whole season in a very smooth and dramatic manner, which is so characteristic for the coaching style of Ancelotti. As for the Italian himself, he once again proved that he is a consummate master of keeping the winning, well-functioning teams in great shape. In the situations when all he must do is to change a couple of players, albeit the key ones at times, from year to year, and retain the certain type of play and positive working attitude, Carla, very much like Sir Alex Ferguson, feels like a fish in the water. He is brilliant and super efficient in those cases, and by no means least because he is calm enough to not force things and way too experienced in order to not make unforced or silly errors. Courtesy to it, throughout this season, Real Madrid slowly but surely enhanced its advantage in Premier and now put themselves in an absolutely secure position. On the contrary, Bayern had a turbulent season, marked by the first lost Bundesliga title since 2012. Whereas Ancelotti was relishing a harmonic relationship both with the players and the notoriously demanding club president Florentino Perez, his counterpart Thomas Tuchel set against himself a lot of people and lift up his reputation of hot-tempered and extremely conflictual person. Frictions within the team led to a lack of consistency, which was especially obvious on the long distance of the German league. All that said, it doesn't mean that Bayern played badly. If Bayer Leverkusen 
have not had a legendary and immaculate campaign in Bundesliga, the perennial favorite could have prevailed once more. It's pretty telling that last season, after the same amount of rounds, 31, the German giants had four points less, which has not stopped them from winning the championship shield. And one more thing, whatever vindictive and irritable he is, Tuchel is a genuine world-class coach with wonderful taste to the passing game, interesting and inventive training sessions, unique tactical acumen and a wealth of experience. And even those players who were offended by his words or actions, and there were a few of those, make no mistake, still gave a lot of credit to the Germans' professional class and skills. Hence, no matter how paradoxical it sounds, we shouldn't take into account the overall season picture, trying to predict the outcome of the upcoming battle. The above mentioned reasons that define the prosperity of Real Madrid and predetermine Bayern's struggles won't, or at least should not, come into play here. There is no doubt that the proximity of the biggest goal of the season will smooth out the rapport between Tuchel and his team, especially if we recall that the German will leave his post in the end of the season regardless of the net result. Under these circumstances, both adversaries should perform at their best, and in this regard, Bayern must be a match for Real Madrid, keeping in mind that the German club is one of the very few opponents who is capable to deprive of the ball Jude Bellingham and company for a long time. Being a brilliant passing team, it's Zidane's legacy which Ancelotti carefully and smartly preserved. The Spanish side doesn't like to chase the ball, and that's why the games versus Manchester City each time are turning for it into immense ordeal. On the contrary, Barcelona in the last seasons, with Ronald Koeman on the bench in particular, but with term two, with its ever weakened midfield and inability to control the ball with the trademark precision, exactly for this reason quietly became Real Madrid's constant and favorite pre, bearing in mind that Tuchel traditionally puts a special emphasis on a sophisticated built-up play, it's reasonable to assume that his side will have at least 50% possession, maybe slightly more, it largely depends on the concrete score and some other variables. The creative and cunning German also is one of the very few tacticians who, at least in theory, could surprise the mighty experienced and composed Ancelotti with the tiny but meaningful work pieces. In addition to it, Bayern have an envious choice of attacking midfielders, even in the absence of the injured Kingsley Coman, who could destabilize or at least caught off guard Real Madrid defense, which is too soft at times. The recovering Jamal Musiala and Leroy Sané should win the race against time and start on Tuesday alongside the versatile Rafael Guerrero, while the other convalescent attacking midfielder Serge Gnabry could substitute one of them at a certain point of the match and score according to Tuchel's bold prediction, which he is not shy at all to repeat. To sum up everything stated above, the upcoming fixture is a thing in itself, and that's why it's primarily interesting. There is little doubt that Real Madrid would have been above Bayern in the table should they compete over the course of the whole season. The fact that the Spanish club will have the brighter future is also out of question, but right now, in two separate games, everything can happen. In this format, two teams are very close, both in terms of their playing style, resources and potential, the possession of the ball and the ability to take goal-scoring opportunities will be the key and whatever magnificent Real Madrid are in these facets of the game, Bayern definitely will have their share of chances. It's a classic 50-50 disposition.